everyone, and welcome to Jane Graham Baptist Church. Would you join and sing with us on praise songs that are in your bulletin? Happy Pentecost Sunday.
stand together as we keep singing hymn number 153, The Lily of the Valley. special day where we can come together and worship you. Thank you for everything that you allowed us to experience yesterday. Thank you for what we will experience today and for tomorrow, Lord. Thank you for blessing us and loving us so much. Now, Lord, help our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds to be open to you today. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 This week, uh, we have Tuesday night, the Man to Mentors, going on at 7. Wednesday night, we have our regular Bible study. It's a really good video series that Al has been doing and teaching on. So if you've been missing that, come on out. It's really good. 7.30 choir practice. We're having a great time. So it, we always have an open invitation for anybody that wants to join the choir. And then Thursday, we will continue having our ladies' Bible study at 10 a.m. led by Kathy.
insurance, Jesus is mine, number 446.
church. Um, I wanted to do a, a brief introduction for Darren Bracey this morning as he joins us to deliver the message. He uh, has been a resident of Surrey County for 21 years. He's married to his wife, Stacy, here. He has two daughters, Ashlyn and Afton. Ashlyn's 22, Afton is 19. He's worked in the public school system and is a Christian educator also in a Christian school. He has coached football and wrestling. Um, his ministry began in 2016 when he was called. He retired from James City County Department of Social Services in 2021. And then he went on to finish his ministry degree and graduated from Veritas Baptist College in 2023 with a degree in ministry and specializing in uh, Bible and modern history. Uh, Darren has a passion for the teaching of the Word of God, and for over 20 years he has taught in Sunday schools, private Christian schools, and church events, and also has a YouTube channel for ministry. So if you will, uh, welcome Darren Bracey to the pulpit to give us How is everyone doing this morning? Good morning. Awesome. So uh, I promise not to keep you here much late. Uh, no promises. Anyway, um, thank you for having me. I'm so uh, blessed for you guys to welcome me. Had a quiet uh, morning, uh, getting a chance to talk to some folks, and my wife and I will stick around if any of you guys have any questions or like to speak to us. Um, we will be glad to hang out and just talk to you. If you would please turn to the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19. So a little confession to start off the morning. It's always good to start off your day with some confession. So a long, long time ago, I was taking this personnel class for my employer, and uh, they had us do a personality test, right? See what type of person you are. See what your personality is like. Uh, so there were four different types of personalities that they had on this, and they were birds. Okay, so you could be a dove, right? Peaceful, loving, kind. You could be a peacock, right? Flamboyant, show off. You could be an owl, wise. And then you could be an eagle, right? Leadership, strong. Want to guess what I wanted to be? Yeah, I wanted to be an eagle. <laughs> so I took the, did the survey, right? And of course, I, I didn't want to wait to find out, so I went to the back. And I looked, and to my chagrin, I was an owl with almost being a peacock. <laughs> I was mortified. I'm like, okay, we're going to change this. So I started going back through the survey again, figuring out and changed myself to an eagle. So now you know that here I, I'm confessing to you that I cheated on a personality test. <laughs> How sad is that? But anyway, it has a point because in theology, there are four types of people, right? Theologically, everyone falls into four different types of groups. You are a believer. You're a believer in Jesus Christ, right? Born of a virgin, came to this earth, lived a sinful life, died on a tree, buried and raised again on the third day. If you believe that, then you are a believer. Then at the opposite end of that spectrum are deniers, right? Atheists, who said there is no God. Of course, what does God call them? Fool. So you have a believer, you have deniers. And then in the middle, you have the manipulator. These are people who have a false Jesus. They don't have a real Jesus. They manipulate the scriptures in order to make their Jesus work for them. Very sad and very dangerous. And then your final group, which is by far your largest group, is the avoider. Now, the avoider knows who Jesus is. He has a basic knowledge of who Jesus is. But he wants to avoid the subject. 
And today we are going to see in the Bible an avoider. And I want you to look at this passage of scripture and see maybe yourself a little bit here. So let's pick up in verse 16. And this is a section we all know really well. And I'll be reading from the ESV. So if it's a slight little difference, it's okay. All right. So, of course, the title of this section is The Rich Young Man. And behold, a man came up to, come to him, saying, Teacher, what good deed must I have do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter, enter life, keep the commandments. And he said to them, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All of these I have kept. What do I still lack? And Jesus said to him, If you would be perfect, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven, and come and follow me. And when the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I will tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And when the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Let us pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your word. It is so powerful, Lord. There is so much here. Lord, let me go away now. Let the Holy Spirit come upon me and let these words be his words, Lord. Let him speak boldly from this pulpit now. Lord, we ask that everything that we do and we say from this point on glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to look. Let's start at the first part of the sentence, okay? First part. And behold, a man came to him, saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? So now let's set the stage a little bit, okay? So basically 16, 17, 18, 19, Jesus is doing this basically running gun battle, I would call it, with the Pharisees, right? It's them going back and forth, back and forth, te uh, Jesus teaching parable, teaching, teaching, right, as the Pharisees come to him, right? And we had that at the beginning of verse 19, at the beginning of chapter 19, where the Pharisees come and ask him about marriage, right? So this is an ongoing thing. So here comes this young man. We don't know who he is. There's a lot of speculation. Was he one of the Pharisees? Was he a plant by the Pharisee? Warren Wiersbe says he's an honest person seeking. Do we actually know? No. But here's what we do know from reading the text. And I want you to pick this up. And this is the great thing about reading the Bible. Okay? Because I, 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 I have done this lesson no less than five times. And I read this again during this week, preparing for this, and I'm like, wow. I, I, so look at the very beginning. And behold, came a man to him, saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Do you hear what he's saying? He's saying, Jesus, how, as me as a man, can I dictate my salvation? That's what he's saying. He's saying, how can I dictate my salvation? I want to do it on my terms. That's remarkable. That's, and so where does he get this from? Well, this is what he's taught. Because if you look at the beginning of chapter 19, and the Pharisees came to him to test him and said, Is it lawful to divorce one's wife? He answered and says, Have you not read that he who created 
from the beginning made them male and female. Jesus quotes who? God. Jesus says, have you not heard God said? What do the Pharisees answer back to him? They said, then why did Moses? Moses is just a man. Moses is just a man. He's not God. Jesus just quoted you the Lord. And you're going to counter, well, but this guy said. Really? Where's so they're wrapped in what they think and what they believe instead of what? What the word of the Lord says. What this says. That's where this young man is coming from. He's saying to them, what can I do? How can I do salvation my way? Look at yourself, society. Does our society not say, I want salvation on my terms and in my way? That's what the avoider says. I want salvation on my terms and in my way. Let's keep going. It's it better from here. So he says, teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Jesus flips it right on and says to him, why do you ask me about what's good? Why do you ask me about what's good? There is only one who is good. Do you get that? See, now, this young man who's supposed to be a Jew should know his psalm. And if he knows his psalm, Psalms 14 and Psalms 53 says what? There are none good. None seek after God. So he already should know there's nothing good you can do. And there's only good that comes from God. So you trying to do a good deed is honestly laughable. Because there are none righteous, no, not one. For all our righteousness are like what? Filthy rags. This is Old Testament. That's Old Testament. This gentleman should have known that. But he wants it on whose terms? His. And Jesus says, there's nothing good you can do because you're not good. Good only comes from the source of good. And the only source of good is God. So he nails that. But then he continues, right? Now, you're going to ask yourself, why does Jesus say this? Well, let's go on and read it, okay? So he says to them, right, if you would enter life, keep the commandments. Now, so why is Jesus telling him, okay, here's what you can do? Because he's a Jew talking to a Jew, okay? He's a Jew. Jesus has not gone to the cross. He has not made that sacrifice. Okay, so he's telling him, for a Jew, you have to do what the Jews do. Keep the commandments. Now, did what this guy says. Which one? Which one? Don't you know Jesus is going to go, all of them? I mean, because that would have been my response. All of them. What does James 2.10 say? For if you violate one law, you have violated all the law. So him being subjective, which to be honest, gave me a little pause and relief in saying, okay, people were just as subjective back then as they are today. Right? I want to be a Christian, but I don't want to follow all this. I only want to follow the parts that I like. I only want to follow the parts that make me feel good. 
No, 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 no. For all scripture is given. For all scripture is breathed out by God. And if it's all breathed out by God, then it's all to be followed. Aaron ain't know which one. But he says, which one? And Jesus goes on and names them. He names them the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, who knows is what Jesus left off? Anybody knows what he left off? He left off the first half of the Ten Commandments, right? That all have to do about God. There's a reason, and he's going to get there. So be patient. But he's basically setting this young man up. He's revealing to him the problem. So he says to him, all the things that we are supposed to do with our neighbors, right? Don't kill them. Don't steal from them. Don't lie about them. Right? Honor your mother and father. Right? All these things. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's our relationship with each other, which the second half of the Ten Commandments takes up. Jesus said, do these. Now, this guy is great. I mean, the young man said to him, all these I have kept. Really? Now, I believe, I believe he probably hadn't murdered anybody. I believe he probably hadn't committed adultery, may not even been married. Right? And there's a possibility that he not has stolen anything. Okay? He's not like me. I go, I used to go to, the, you know, when you used to have to go to the bank, right? And they had a pen. Right? I am the reason that they put pens on the chain. <laughs> I, I am that guy. Right? When you go into a bank and there's the pen is on the chain, you go, that's because of Darren. <laughs> because I am the guy. I take the pen and I'm like, I'm gone. And I get back in my car and I'm halfway down the road and I stole the pen. So it's possible he might not stole. Right? And he might have been the perfect kid when he was growing up, right? Perfect kid. But did he never tell a lie? I doubt that. I doubt that. But okay, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. He said, okay, all of these I have kept, what do I like? He knows what? There's something missing. There's something missing. He's saying, I've done all this. I've done all this. And I know there's something missing. If you're telling yourself today, and you, I just read that list, and you say, I've never done all those, what's still missing? You're getting ready to find out what's missing. And Jesus said to him, if you would be perfect, Go, sell what you sell your possessions, give them to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven, and come and follow me. Now, that is not a socialistic statement. This is not Jesus telling us to give all our stuff away and give it to the poor. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying to this young man is, is your stuff is your God. That's what you worship. Your stuff is your God. Get rid of it completely and follow the true God, which is me. That's what he's telling you. Now, my friends, let me ask you. What's your stuff? What's your stuff? See, the avoider wants to hold on to his stuff because he knows to follow Jesus, 
means you're going to lose things. Because Jesus said, you are not worthy of me if you're going to hold on to other things. Pick up your cross and follow me. And so he's telling this young man, you have stuff. That is your God. You need to follow the one true God. So let me ask you, what is your God? What are you holding on to that is between you and Jesus? We all have it. I have it. And God broke me across my head because of it. I don't have time to tell you that story. But I can testify to that. We all have it. We have that thing that we hold up above God. And we are avoiding getting rid of it. He says, take your stuff, sell it. Oh, and don't just keep the money. Give that to the poor so that you have what? Nothing, because nothing should be between you and me and come follow me. Same message to you. Whatever that is, whatever that God is that you're putting up there, get rid of it. Let it go and follow him. See what the avoider does. And when the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Is there no doubt that he loved his possessions more than he loved eternal life? He's willing to roll the dice on his eternal salvation to keep stuff. How sad. But isn't that our society today? How many of them are out there walking, chasing after stuff? And when they die, that's going to go to someone else. Someone else is going to take it. You want a sad event? Go to an estate sale. Go to an estate sale. Don't buy anything. Just watch all the stuff that give given to other people after a person has died. What good did it do them? Nothing. I'm not telling you not to have nice stuff. I'm not telling you that. It's okay to have nice stuff. Don't make it your God. Don't make chasing after things more important than serving the creator of the universe. That's more important. And this poor young man, and in our world today, are willing to sacrifice their eternal salvation. And when I mean eternal, it is forever. And we cannot fathom that. But it is. It is forever. So Jesus continues. He says, Truly I say unto you, it is great difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Why is Jesus saying that? Because he's saying because the rich person has put his salvation in himself. How do I know this? Read what the disciples say. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly what? Astonished. Why? Because in that day, and oh, by the way, in this day, there is a perception that if you have lots of stuff and money, you are <coughs> what? By God. You're what? Blessed. He's obviously blessed. 
He's obviously blessed. Look at that nice car. Look at that nice house. They're obviously blessed. And Jesus goes, no, they're not. No, they're not. That has nothing to do with a blessing from God. Zip. And so the disciples go, whoa, 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 wait. We, knew, we thought that rich people were blessed by God. And you're now telling us they're not? And Jesus goes, that's right. That's right. See, because they're man-centered rather than God-centered. They're like, what? Men do matter. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. If you could earn your salvation, why did Jesus have to go to the cross? That doesn't make any sense. If you could do anything, why did Jesus have to go to the cross? He wouldn't have. You could have done it. You could have fixed it. You can't. You can't. So they were astonished, and they say, Who can be saved? They're like, Well, I didn't know he was a guy chat. Which is true. <laughs> and Jesus looked at them and said, With man, it is what? Impossible. You cannot. Yourself. None of your works matter. It doesn't. You can't do it. But read what he's next saying. With God, with God, with God, all things are possible. See, salvation is a miracle. It is a miraculous thing because the creator of the universe decided that he chose to redeem us. Now, I, I need you to really think about that deeply. Because when Adam and Eve sinned, God could have just gone, yeah, no, it's not worth it. Yeah, no, this is not worth it. Gone. Gone. Was that his response? No. God says in Genesis 3.15 for the seed of the woman shall do what? Crush the seed of the serpent. I I am going to redeem you. I am going to redeem you. I am going to send Jesus. And he will go to the cross. And he will bear your sins. And he shall take the punishment that you and I so richly deserve. And do what you cannot do. <clears throat> this is a work of God. You only have one action. Accept it. Accept it. And be transformed. In John 3, J Jesus tells Nicodemus, a Pharisee, who's deep, just like this guy, who's deep into doing all the law and the sacrifices. <coughs> and Jesus says to him, hey, guess what? All that's worthless. Thank you. Thank you for getting that, sir. All that's worthless. You have to be what? Born again, you have to be changed. You have to be transformed. Who's going to transform you? Can you transform yourself? No. You have to be transformed by the Holy Spirit. Paul later on tells us, you have to become a what? New creation. <coughs> the old man is gone. The new man is 
here. So you have to be changed. And that change starts when you say to Jesus, I am a sinner. I am unworthy to be in your presence, but I accept your sacrifice. And I believe that you rose from the dead. Save my eternal soul. And the Spirit of God comes upon you and transforms you. And it's not, okay, now I'm super Christian. No. It's a process. It's called sanctification. We work to become more Christ-like through our lives. But that starts through accepting him. That starts by saying, I'm not worthy. And I need you. Today, my friends, you're sitting in this church and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You don't have another minute Literally, either Christ returns and the tribulation begins, or you walk out that door and maybe die. I can't. Now, if you're saying, "Well, you're trying to scare me, Darren," yes, yes, I am. Yeah, and I'm okay with that because I don't want to not see you. I do not want to not see you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We all know that. Right? John 3.16. Do you know what John 3.18 says? Who can quote John 3.18? You should. It should be memorized just as much as 3.16. For he who believes is not condemned. Because he believed on the Son, but he who does not believe is what? Condemned already. There is no waffling. There is no gray area. You either believe and you're in eternity, or you don't believe and you're going to hell. Don't let that happen to you. Don't avoid it. Don't be this guy. Don't be an avoidance. Don't avoid that question. Make that choice today. And you can do it right there in your seat. You can do it right there in your seat. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that you've given us together, Lord. We thank you for the mercies that you show upon us every day. Lord, convict us of those things that we are avoiding. Convict us of the need to walk in your path. Lord, I pray and I ask for blessings for every person in this church that you be with them and convict them. Let the Holy Spirit come and convict them, Lord, that they need to follow you in the best that they can. In Jesus' name. Stand together as we sing your invitation hymn, number 407. Perhaps you want to come and um, pray with Brother Bracey, or if you need prayer for something else, or you want to come receive Christ, please come. If you want to join Chamber of Baptist Church, we welcome you.
Stacy and I will hang out up here if any of you like to come by and ask me uh, any type of questions. I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, let's pray and be dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious day, Lord, to be in your house. What a wonderful opportunity you have given us. Lord, we ask that you bless every person that is here. Be with them and travel and bring them back at the next appointed time. For all this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.